Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm Alexander Konchev. I'm a clinical psychiatrist and the first year PhD student here at the Center for Trans Translational Medicine. The title of my PhD topic is the association between metabolic syndrome and cognitive dysfunctions in schizophrenia. My vision is that I hope in the future schizophrenia will be a manageable condition and will be compatible with a fulfilling life. To achieve my vision, my mission is that I would like to fully elucidate the relationship between metabolism and cognitive dysfunctions in schizophrenia. Related to my PhD topic, we are currently working on two separate projects. In the first project, we are investigating the effects of impaired glucose homeostasis on cognitive functions in schizophrenia. In our second project, we are investigating the association between cognition, visual dysfunctions, and metabolic syndrome in schizophrenia. So let me introduce you our uh, first project, which is the effect of impaired glucose homeostasis on cognitive functions in schizophrenia. Some sentences about the background. Schizophrenia is a very severe chronic lifelong psychiatric disorder. The prevalence is around 1%. That means millions affected worldwide. The prognosis of the disease is very bad. That means these patients have 20 years shorter lifespan. 25% have a suicide attempt uh, during their life, and they live with impaired functionality and productivity, mainly due to the cognitive dysfunctions. To make the prognosis even worse, these patients are more likely to develop comorbid uh, metabolic conditions and diseases such as insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Uh, for example, the prevalence of insulin resistance is two or three times uh, higher than in the general population. Why is it important? Because diabetes is linked to worse cognitive impairment in schizophrenia, but this has yet not been shown for the beginning stages of the diabetic spectrum, I mean for insulin resistance and impaired glucose uh, metabolism. And to make our uh, um, study more controversial, honestly, the atypical or second generation antipsychotics that we use in the everyday practice to treat schizophrenia are associated with an increased incidence of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. So from the background comes our clinical question, is impaired glucose homeostasis a risk factor of more severe cognitive impairment in patients with schizophrenia? Here you can see on the slide our PICO. The population will be patients with schizophrenia. The exposure will be impaired glucose homeostasis. The co comparison will be physiological glucose homeostasis, and the outcome will be the cognitive test scores measured by any validated cognitive batteries or tests. Our hypothesis is that impaired glucose homeostasis is worse than cognitive functions in patients with schizophrenia. And if our hypothesis is true, it will have many clinical and research implications. First of all, in the everyday practice, we have to measure all of the glucose metabolism or homeostasis uh, parameters. For example, fasting glucose, fasting insulin levels. We have to calculate the home IR index. And if we find any disturbances or abnormalities in these parameters, we, uh, we have to treat them as soon as possible with every therapeutic option that we have. For example, changes in diet, enhance the physical activity of these patients, and if it's uh, needed, we have to use antidiabetic drugs as an adjuvant therapy. Uh, we conducted our systematic search in five main databases. Uh, we found more than 10,000 articles with the following search key. We found our key articles. All of our key articles were published in very good psychiatry journals, for example, in Frontiers in Psychiatry or Molecular Psychiatry from the Nature portfolio. Here you can see our progress. We are in the data extraction phase right now. On this slide, you can see the flowchart of selection. We started, more than, we started with more than 10,000 articles. After the duplication remo removal, we had uh, more than 6,000 articles. And we, right now, we have 33 eligible full texts. Our second project is the investigating the effects of metabolic syndrome and its components on cognitive functions in schizophrenia. Some sentences about the background. As I mentioned, cognitive impairment is a hallmark of, hallmark of schizophrenia that is significantly correlated with the functional outcomes. And schizophrenia is appears to be associated with a metabolic syndrome diathesis that is exacerbated, exacerbated by the antipsychotic therapy. And the me metabolic syndrome and its constituent criteria are risk factors for uh, clinically significant, significant uh, cognitive impairment. So here comes the question in a Hungarian sample, how can we measure the cognitive functions of these patients? For example, with the Airbus cognitive battery, 
the ARBANS is an acronym of the reputable battery for the assessment of the neuropsychological status. It um, uh, consists uh, of 12 subtests that provide five individual domain scores for attention, short and long term memory, for language and visual spatial skills. So our aim is to inve investigate the effect of metabolic syndrome and its components and cognitive functions in patients with schizophrenia. The clinical question is, comes from our background. Is metabolic syndrome and its components a risk factor of more severe cognitive impairment in patients with schizophrenia? The population will be patients with schizophrenia. The exposure will be the components of metabolic syndrome, and the outcome will be the cognitive functions, in this case, the urban scores. So our hypothesis is that metabolic syndrome and its components worsen the cognitive functions of, in patients with schizophrenia. If our hypothesis is true, it will have many clinical and research implications, like in the first project. We have to measure the different metabolic parameters uh, when we start the antipsychotic treatment, before we start the antipsychotic treatment in these patients. And if, if we find any disturbances or, or abnormalities, we have to treat them as soon as possible. Here you can see our research plan. It's in a preliminary phase. We would like to analyze a data set, for, data set of 200, 200 patients with schizophrenia. The cognitive functions of every patient were assessed with airbans. We would like to screen the medical record, records for uh, metabolic parameters, for example, for fasting glucose, hemoglobin A1C, triglycerides, cholesterol, and we, we would like to investigate the association between the metabolic parameters and the cognitive functions. And I would like to finish my presentation with one of my favorite quotes from Albert Sanjordi. The key to happiness is not to get more, but to enjoy what we have and fill the empty frame of our lives instead of enlarging it. Thank you for your kind attention. So congratulations, first of all. Uh, I just want to ask one clarification for me uh, regarding the second project. Are you interested in the parameters which you can measure, like uh, in serum, for example, or uh, in the components of metabolic syndrome, such as also like visceral, I don't know, adipose yeah, or something in, in like this? Yeah, in everything, in every parameter. Okay. Yeah, we have the medical records of these patients and in every parameter, yeah. Mm -hmm. So also visceral yes. obesity, high Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you. Congratulations, great presentation. Uh, it's, uh, it, uh, last time when I was listening to your presentation, I, I, I was remembering uh, much uh, less articles than 33, so it's a, it's a great number. Uh, I was just wondering that uh, how, what kind of recommendations will be able to will you be able to give in, in the end? Because uh, from my experience, most of these articles we report that insulin resistance, like yes or no. Uh, and not like, okay, is it treated? Uh, how long is the patient uh, having this? What kind of activities are they performing? So th do you have very good quality papers that uh, actually from which you can have uh, very clear recommendations and how can you do this? Yeah, and um, we are also interested in healthy population from the metabolic uh, aspect. I mean, uh, where articles uh, published correlation between the fasting glucose or fasting insulin levels and HOMAIR index correlated with the cognitive scores. So here is the problem. In the earlier stages, it's a PETO mechanism and molecular me mechanism behind, behind it a little bit different. So we will have different subgroups. For example, patients with schizophrenia and with diabetes or patients with schizophrenia with insulin resistance and also has patients from the metabolic aspect. Congratulations to your presentation. I would like to ask if you are also interested in comorbidities associated with metabolic syndrome like um, chronic coronary syndrome, fatty liver disease, etc. If you are also investigate these factors. Yeah, we, yeah, we are planning to do it. And just one more question uh, concerning the score that you have chosen for the second project, like why you decided for this particular score. And for the first project, um, what about the drugs that you mentioned that could be controversial? Like, how would you deal with it? Like, would you have subgroup for the treatment, specific type of treatment? Thank you. Yeah, so we use the Airbans in a Hungarian sample because this is the validated cognitive battery in Hungarian language. And for your second question, yeah, it's kind of hard because uh, 
most of the cases, uh, psychiatrists use the second generation antipsychotics because they have less extra, extra pyramidal side effects, but the metabolic side effects are more severe than in the typical antipsychotic group. So, yeah, we, we will uh, check the case, uh, case reports and the, um, how, uh, how, was, uh, how were these patients treated, what was the medication. Just a very quick question regarding the first project. So you mentioned that the atypical antipsychotics anti associate with uh, increased risk mm -hmm. for metabolic diseases. But like, what is the like the physiological or biochemical link? How do they decrease the you know the insulin resistance or actually increase the insulin resistance, the efficacy of insulin? Do you know it? Yeah, it's uh, it's quite a hot topic right now in psychiatry, and it's. It's not so, I don't know the perfect answer for it, but it's, uh, they can cause obesity, for example. And after obesity, the patients are more likely to develop insulin resistance. And uh, in the University of Toronto, there is a research group who are uh, researching this topic, and they found maybe these uh, antipsychotics uh, could cause insulin resistance in the CNS, and it's a, uh, it's a uh, Bidirectional bi crosstalk between the periphery and uh, and the CNS and yeah so I don't have the perfect answer for this question. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I have a question regarding for your first topic. Uh, so you mentioned that the medication uh, is the reason of the high uh, the insulin resistance of diabetes, but. Uh, um, is there are any factors like um, dietary habits in these patients, or are you planning to investigate that? Nutrition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Also, the socioeconomic status, the education level, the treatment status, yeah, we are looking for everything. And how will you evaluate this? How, how will you um, find the um, reasons behind this? So, do you have a questionnaire or something like that? So actually, in some in some articles, uh, other comorbid um, metabolic diseases were excluded, for example. And every article just stated the socioeconomic status and and stuff like that. Yeah.